Hi there, this is Diecast Channel, and in this video I'm going to show you this 1969 Dot Charger. It's not an ordinary RT, but a 500, which is a different charger. So if you're curious about this almost forgotten muscle car, and also like those Mopars, stay with me to the end of this video, because I'll let's unbox this beauty and take a better look at it. So here we have the charger. This is the Charger 500, 1969, that's made in 1 to 18 scale by ERTL, or Earl, if you prefer. And this is a very nice looking and attractive car. So what are the differences between this particular charger and the Charger RT? We're going to see them. The first one we can notice is a different front. And the second, and a rear window. One thing that Chrysler designers started to notice is Dodge Charger, although Dodge Charger was a very expressive and high performance muscle car at the time, it didn't really matter how much engine it, it had. It was losing several NASCAR races for Far Torino, Talladega, and Mercury Spoiler. And this was due to aerodynamics. The Dodge Charger at the time had uh, two tail fins right here uh, close to the rear window. And those two fins armed of the car performance. And then in the wind tunnel, uh, the car was a complete disaster. So they decided to redo this part of the body and study the body now in a way it could be more aerodynamic. At the same time, they replaced the front grill with this for headlights front rail that was actually borrowed from the 1968 Dodge Coronet. Unfortunately, I don't have a Dodge Coronet to show, but this one we can notice that if we compare this car to Dodge Coronet, the front is exactly the same. Made, this model car made by Earl is a, a very nice looking model car and a pretty decent one. It's not the top quality since it's not an authentic, it's a simpler line, it's a basic line. So we're going to see that uh, there are some some issues and some things that could be improved. One example is the rear deck that doesn't open, but uh, in general, it's pretty well made and a pretty nice looking car. As we look at the charger, we can see that the lines are basically the same. Uh, from this angle, we can notice really uh, no big changes at all. Uh, the biggest change is, is this part of the rear end, the rear window, in which we don't have those fins that we have in the, char in the Charger RT, but we cannot notice from this angle. Uh, the biggest difference and the only one we can notice is the 500 stripe at the rear end. But the rest of the car is basically the same. The paint and quality is good, paint really shines. Some details could be improved. Those directional lights could be uh, cast in metal and also painted on instead of just painted on. They look like stickers, but they're actually uh, decals on the paint. Uh, just like this door lock, that could be a little bit better. And uh, those are all separate parts. This uh, mirror, uh, the vent window, and the door handle, as we can notice. The gas cap is about the same thing as the uh, Charger RT. Wheels and tires look very nice with those dog dish hubcaps. And those openings here could be made in black so they look like they're open actually. But this can be done. White striped tires also look very nice. The front of the Charger 500 is, has uh, the exact same grille of the Dodge Coronet, uh, 1968 Dodge Coronet. I've shown a 1969. Unfortunately, I don't have a 1968 Coronet to show. And I don't even know if it exists. If you know anything about a uh, Diecast 1968 model car or even a kit, just let me know down in your comments. The general lines of the car are basically the same as the Charger RT. The hood is the same. We have an antenna here that's made of plastic. Uh, it's almost more realistic than the other antennas we've seen in Euro cars, but it's a uh, kind of brittle really we have to be very careful with this antenna not to break it uh, the windshield wipers are separate parts 
and the trim around the windshield is uh, cast in metal and painted on. Um, it's quite simple, but it's really uh, very nice. This painting has got a little stain here that was probably caused when the car was painted. That would be an issue, really. But in general, the painting quality is good. There are no rashes, no um, imperfections, no roughnesses, no details at all. The front grill mesh could be a little better with a, with some black paint. The logo is good. A charger 500 and the headlights are pretty realistic. They've got some pigs here, but uh, they could be a little bit better than this. But uh, in general, they reproduce quite well what happens in the real car. The bumper has a very good quality chrome. There are no issues at all. Bumper guards are good in a good proportion. This air intake could be painted black, so it would look like an opening, actually. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. And those auxiliary lights are actually uh, cast, in, cast in metal and painted with silver. Uh, they have no uh, acrylic lenses here. Uh, that's not really an issue because it's a quite good reproduction. With the hood open, we can take a look at 426 Hemi engine, which is a high-performance big block Chrysler at the time, along with the 440 Magnum. It's a very nice looking engine. As we can see, the engine bay is quite simple, but it's got some pretty good detail in here. Uh, the engine is a separate component, just like it happens to our, our models. Sometimes they make models with a uh, cast in plastic engine engine bay and engine all together and this really looks a little weird 426 form air filter reservoir uh, the battery is really very simple those small caps here are actually uh, painted on there they're not even a uh, cast in plastic and a terminal that could be a little bit better uh, this is not very difficult engine to make some further detail so I probably add some uh, spark plug cables right here atop the, va the valve covers just like it happens to Hemi engines. Radiator looks good, radiator cap and front panel look okay. Simple Earl hinges we usually find in these models they could be a little bit better and if they were authentics they would be fantastic with those pantographic hinges just like it happens in the real car. The hood is pretty well made, and a very nice thing about this hood is it has a wide opening so we can really see the engine and the engine bay. One more look. Distributor, alternator, valve covers, and the engine block made in Hemi Orange. Firewall could be a little bit better. Chrysler Pentastar. Um, perhaps it could be a little lower. I, I think it should be a little bit lower. And a Hemi logo, which is a decal, actually. The charger rear end is about the same we find at the RT, but with the difference that we have no RT here, just a charger and a charger logo. The trunk lock is uh, cast in plastic. This is a, an only piece of plastic that was made with uh, uh, the rear trim, the tail lights, and the bumper. Uh, they're all well made. The chrome has a very good quality, the flat black. Uh, detail around the trim is very good. The logo is good. It's a, it's a decal. It's a real, pretty well made. And uh, the tail lights are pretty good, really, and they are exactly like the ones you find at the Charger RT. The gas cap is the same. And uh, we can notice that the difference, the, the difference between the 500 and the RT is a smaller trunk lid due to this slope here in the rear. So we have no fins, and the rear window is right in this position. It's got a pretty good transparency. That uh, Dodge Charger Daytona, I, I personally really don't like. I think it looks awful. But with that big wing in the rear and that nose on the front, is based on this model here, actually. So you take that wing off, you take that front off, you end up with a Charger 500. Dual exhaust, trunk lid markings are pretty well made. Driver side, the pedals are gas, brake, and clutch, and park and brake. So this is a mechanical transmission. The gauges are pretty much the same we find in Charger RT. Those are quite simple, made with stickers, 
but with a very good quality. The, the dashboard is all cast in plastic. The seats here do not tilt. They're a little bit too shiny to simulate seats. Perhaps if they were a little more satin, they could look a little, could look a little better. Um, the carpet and uh, floor mats are made with textures in the same piece of plastic, and the central console is made of plastic as well. The interior of this car uh, looks simple, but um, in general it looks good. There's no headliner, just sun visors. The base of car is a basic uh, plastic base. Just uh, uh, the base of car is a plastic base, as we see in the other Earl, uh, the the other older Earl models, as I've shown before. Uh, so we cannot ex expect that uh, quality, that painting quality we find in the authentics with the primer and the body color as we usually see in those Mopars I've recently shown. So uh, this is a, uh, it's a pretty honest model. Uh, the mufflers are pretty well made. The engine and training are pretty well made. The drive shaft is fixed. Suspension, the wheels steer along with the steering wheel, just like it happens to the 1 to 18th cars. In general, it's not a bad model. It's just an older model and an older line of Virto. So we can really not expect the same quality you're going to find in the new Auto World models in which those details were improved, especially if you're talking about the authentics. Here we have the 1969 Dodge Coronet Super B. This is a six pack I've shown in a previous video. The 69 Charger 500. So the 68 Coronet would be something like this with. A grill like this and a 69 for a Torino Talladega I've shown in a previous video this one is made by Maisto but as we can notice the front grills are not the same but they're quite similar Torino Talladega which is a fastback so airflows would be much improved without those fins that are used to be in a Charger RT both cars seen from here they have very similar designs and they have the same length. They're both B bodies. Ranking this car from zero to 10, I would give it an eight. I think it's a pretty good car. It's a simple Earl model. It's an older Earl model. So we can really expect much as we, as much as we can expect from the, the Earl Autanix, for instance. But it's still a pretty well made car. It's got a pretty good quality painting. It should have an opening trunk and that issue on the paint and i've shown it's really something that accounts a little negative to the car but in general it's a very well made car it's, it's got a pretty good quality it's a very attractive car so i'd like to thank you for all likes and views for all subscriptions please don't forget to subscribe to give me your thumbs up to share this video and let me know down in your comments what you think about the video and about the car and if you knew uh, about such car or if it's news for you so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye bye